In this tutorial, I'll show you how to get prepared for Excel assessment test in 20 simple steps. Coming up on online training for everyone. When you come to employment agency, a lot of times they want to validate your Excel skills by giving you a test. They give you a lot of different tests. This is just one of the examples. And in this video, we're going to go step by step and complete all 20 steps of this test. What you see on the screen is the practice document on the left and you see list of steps on the right with the status. So we will go one by one and complete each step of this Excel assessment test. For the best results, I recommend you download the sample file from my website and follow me. So this way you can learn and be successful as part of the test. Let's focus on the step number one. So the step number one asks us to extend column B to fit total cost by month. So column B is this column and uh, total cost by month is this value. So as part of this uh, step, what we need to do, we need to expand column B. So the value of total cost by month fits into the column B. And we'll mark this step as completed. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to change background in the status column to green. To best complete exercises, it uh, often helps to understand what kind of data you're dealing with. So let's closely look at the data. This is the table with uh, business expenses and looks like expenses categorized um, by different uh, items. We have office supplies, lease, utilities, phone expense, computer and internet expenses. Then we have values uh, by month uh, we have January through May, and these are the values related to these expenses. Knowing this information will help us to complete step number two of Excel assessment test. To complete this, uh, let's go ahead and read it. Uh, we need to calculate total cost of expenses by month using formula. We already extended the uh, column to fit total cost by month. Now we need to populate the values here in the row 12. Uh, and uh, the best formula to do this work is the sum formula. You can type in sum formula. I'll show you multiple ways how you can do it. You can type formula um, sum and then you just highlight the range for which it's applicable and then you close the parenthesis and hit enter. So this is the total value. Uh, another way to do it is there is a sum formula button. So you click it and Excel anticipates very correctly or often correctly in this case definitely correctly what the range is so I'll hit enter again and the third way would be when you already have the formula you can just extend it you see this uh, I selected the formula value and value shows right here um, in the formula box we can extend it and I'll just extend it uh, till the end of the first quarter and first quarter is January, February, March. Uh, and another way to do it would be copy and paste values. So you can copy value and copy is through this copy button. And then we highlight the area for March through May and then we click the paste button. So now we've populated total cost by month in um, the row 12 and we can mark this step as complete. Let's go and continue to the step number three and step number three is create border around the table. So first we need to understand what is the table and in this case table is all expenses even the ones that we have not calculated yet uh, with the total cost and then average cost which we have steps to calculate later. So what we need to do we need to highlight the table select borders around the table and uh, the best value for this selection is all borders so this is what i'm going to select and this completes step number three let's go to step number four format data as currency so what we need to understand here is the difference between uh, values for the monthly expenses and total expenses versus uh, just the text values uh, which describe expenses themselves to and uh, what we need to do, we need to format data uh, values as currency. To do that, we need to highlight the data and select the currency sign, uh, accounting number format, 
it's a dollar sign for me because I'm located in the United States might be different for your country and we've completed step number four so now we can mark it as complete now let's go ahead and continue to step number five and uh, in step number five we need to use formula to calculate total costs so formula would be the same uh, the best uh, way to calculate total costs would be to use the sum formula and we already looked at how to use it the only difference would be we used it um, uh, vertically to calculate um, values for the column now we'll be using it horizontally to calculate values for the rows but the concept is the same for some it doesn't matter it uses the range so I am going to just use um, the button on the ribbon uh, toolbar and uh, I put the uh, cursor into the cell I6 uh, click the button and uh, Excel predicted correctly that the range I'm trying to calculate sum for is C6 through H6 so I'm going to hit enter uh, and I'm just going to extend the range for this values up to the total cost by month and you see total cost by month doesn't fit as well as our header so it's better for us to extend it a little bit and we can mark step five as completed as you can see uh, I have to expand the values so it doesn't fit anymore so I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can continue to see all the values as well as the steps in assessment test and I use the zoom zoom out bar at the bottom right corner of Excel let's go and continue and do step number six uh, and step number six asks us to use a formula to calculate average costs for average costs let's extend the column J uh, a little bit and I'll show you another way to extend the column so all the text fits you can just double click on the line and um, that separates J and K and uh, that expands the column up to the size of the text that's in the column J so what we'll do now we will use average and average formula remember I showed you how to use some formula type it in manually so we can use uh, equal and then say average and then we have to select the range and the trick here is that uh, we do not want to include total cost by into calculation of the average we just need to select the values from C6 uh, through H6 which would represent all the values um, for office supplies and then we close the parenthesis you see the formula here and hit enter so our average cost for office supplies is uh, 351.15 can extend this formula because it's going to be the same all the values uh, up to the internet uh, there's no reason to calculate average total cost by month I guess we can so we'll just extend it and we'll mark step six as complete let's continue to step number seven and uh, in step number seven it asks us to change alignment in column D to right so column D is uh, February month we can select column D and um, there's no alignment right now in column D but this is the right alignment and that uh, button by clicking align right completes the step uh, seven in our checklist and we'll mark step seven as complete question number eight uh, calculate quarterly costs for Q1 and Q2 so Q1 is January through March and Q2 is April through June and uh, the best way for us to calculate total cost uh, for the quarter would be to sum up total cost by month so we will use two columns um, two cells actually one would be to say that this is Q1 uh, costs so we we'll add adding new values here and here we will calculate the values it's going to be sum sum would be calculated customly um, by uh, selecting values in the row 12 C 12 through E 12 and then we'll just hit enter so this would be Q1 costs Q2 costs we will report here Q2 costs in the cell H13 we'll calculate it the same way select the sum button and uh, Q2 would be April through June six thousand eight hundred twenty three dollars and thirteen cents are costs for Q2 and we can mark step eight as complete let's continue to the next step step number nine in step number nine we need to save the file to documents folder to do that we click on the uh, file tab and we click save as and we click browse and documents folder be right here so we select documents folder um, and uh, the name of the file we just check that everything's good and we click save button let's mark step number nine as complete now we can move to step number 10 
And step number 10 is change page orientation to landscape. Um, so page orientation is uh, defined in page layout tab. So we click on the page layout tab and we click on orientation. Right now you see orientation is portrait. So we just need to switch uh, orientation to landscape and we can mark this step as complete. Go back to the home tab and uh, fill the color for this uh, cell. Let's continue and go to step number 11. And in step number 11, we need to fit work table into single page for printout. So first let's define work table. Work table is the table that we're working with, obviously, um, which does not include the steps for assessment test. To do that, the best way to complete this part um, would be to select the print area. And to select print area, we need to first see how our document turns out. So in print preview, to do that, we need to click file and then print and it shows print preview. And you see uh, that it does show our work table, but this might be misleading because there is a second page here uh, since there is a scroll bar on the right and if we click scroll bar we see this table so ultimately the objective is to eliminate this uh, table with the steps and for printout purposes only have a business expenses table select to do that let's go back uh, to our work document and um, we need to define print area so we need to select the area that we'll be working with and I'll expand area a little bit just in case we need to add more values around our work table and uh, I'll select the range between a1 and uh, k23 and I'll go to page layout and this is where we define print area and we select set print area button so click on the print area button first and then set print area so now we have print area defined and let's go and verify our print area by navigating to file tab print and as you can see we now only have one page with our work table ready for printout this way we can mark step 11 as complete we go back to the home tab and uh, mark it as complete let's go to step number 12 and step number 12 um, here we need to center table header values so table header um, is this row 5 to center all these values we need to select them and then click the center button and that completes step number 12 so we can mark it as complete let's go to step number 13 and step number 13 we need to spell check the document Document. Uh, to do spell checking, um, we can go to review tab and there is a spelling button. So let's click spelling and it asks us, do you want to continue checking? Uh, at the beginning of the sheet and we say yes spell check is complete everything looks good one thing i'd like to show you here if you don't know where function is located because it's not obvious where a spell check would be uh, let's go back to the home tab what you can do there is a search box and uh, you can just type for the function here the one that you're trying to find and spelling would be one of them so we click spelling and it shows actions and it clicks spelling and it actually goes through the same set of actions you can find any excel function in the search box i'm click, gonna click no because we've already done it and it will mark this step as complete let's go to step number 14 and in step number 14 we need to rename sheet one uh, and call it a business expense so sheet names are uh, at the bottom left so we have sheet one right here to rename it you can do it multiple ways one way is right mouse click and click select rename there is also option of just double clicking on the sheet name um, and you can start typing right away that's kind of a shortcut so we need to mark it as uh, business expenses and you can just click anywhere outside of this title and rename is complete and we can mark step 14 as complete let's continue and uh, in step number 15 we need to add a new worksheet this is easy there is a plus button which uh, highlights and allows you to add new worksheet we just click on this and by default it's going to take the name sheet one uh, but there are no instructions of renaming it or anything so we'll just go back to business expense and mark this uh, step as complete let's continue and go to step number 16 and in step number 16 we need to create a column chart to show expenses for the first quarter so first quarter values are January through March and expenses uh, are listed here so to do that we need to select the area of expenses include the types of expenses and include the values January through March so it's basically a range between the cells B5 and uh, E12 so once we selected all this area we need to click insert button and insert chart and it asks us for column chart right and when we click this extension arrow uh, it shows 2d column or 3d column so we can i guess select any one of those it does not 
uh, indicate which one you like. So the fancier looking ones are 3D columns. So if you like, you can select that. I'm going to just choose the basic one. And um, now the chart is created. There are no additional instructions. What we need to do here, you certainly can play with this. But what I'm going to do, one important consideration is make sure it fits into the print area. And print area is highlighted. You see it ends at the uh, row 23. So I'm going to make this chart a little bit smaller by resizing it and move it. I'm going to move it here into this area so it fits into print area and make it even smaller. So this way it fits into the print range area. And this way we can mark step 16 as complete. Let's go and complete step number 17. And in step 17, we need to change the width of column I and J so the content fits. You see that column I has a total value by month hidden. Uh, that's what this pound sign means, that we don't see the whole value. To expand it, we just need to double click on the separator between columns I and J, and that uh, extends the column so all the values fit now, and we can mark this step as complete. Moving on to step number 18, we need to bold all headings and change headings font to 12 points. So first of all, let's define headings. Headings are uh, is a range uh, B5 through uh, J5 so let's select it first we need to make it bold by clicking the bold button that's one way another way is if you do right mouse click uh, bold button is available here as well right on the context sensitive menu so let's choose it here uh, and then um, we will uh, change the font size right now it's size font 11 of Calibri font we'll change it to size 12 and this way we can highlight and mark step 18 as complete Let's go to step number 19, and in step 19, we need to merge and center the table heading business expenses. So first, let's look at business expenses. Um, business expenses are in cell C, B, 3, uh, and we need to uh, merge and center them. So to do that, we need to merge all the uh, cells between B, uh, 3, and J, 3. To do that, we need to highlight them, and um, we need to click here on the alignment settings and select alignment itself and click merge cells. Click OK. So this merges all the cells. Now it becomes one single cells, and it will behave as one single cell. And we just need to center business expenses here uh, to do that we select the cell and click center button and now business expenses are centered we can mark step 19 as complete and let's move on to step number 20 the last step in our exercise uh, here we're going to forecast lease cost for third quarter by calculating q3 total so it's a little bit tricky question but let's see um, how we can address it let's find the lease costs um, so lease costs if we look they are fixed and similar um, so January through March, uh, the amounts are the same. Not everything is the same, as you can see. Only lease is the same, and then we have internet costs are the same. But internet costs go same through Q1 and Q2. Lease costs increased um, from Q1 to Q2. They increased by $20. So, And the exercise asks us to forecast least costs for third quarter by calculating Q3 total. So we'll make an assumption that because they increased from Q1 by $20 to Q2, we will have the similar increase from Q2 to Q3, and we will make calculations uh, based on this assumption. To do that, uh, let's move this uh, chart a little bit to the right, and we will say... Uh, lease cost uh, forecast for Q3 um, and um, here in this cell we will calculate the value and the value would be uh, we'll have 790 um, we'll take the value from um, April let's say we'll add uh, $20 and we'll put it in parenthesis and we will multiply by three and that gets us to the total of two thousand four hundred thirty dollars and that's uh, estimated forecast for least cost uh, with the assumption that it's going to increase by twenty dollars per month in q2 q3 and this allows us to mark step 20 as complete if you like the content please make sure to click the like button and share with your friends also, there's tons of information in the description of this video. Make sure to check it out. Make sure to check out my other relevant videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We have a lot of great stuff planned in the pipeline and I don't want you to miss any of it. 
And if you'd like to get notified about all the new stuff that are coming out, make sure to subscribe to my email list as well. All links are here on the screen. Make sure to click to stay in touch. Thanks again for watching.